stay frosty, things are about to get explosive. In this video, we're going to see how we can implement different bullet effects like frost bolts or explosive rounds. Those are just two examples of what we're going to implement here. But the goal of this video is for you to be able to implement all kinds of different bullet impact effects using this system. Hey, Chris here from Mom Academy. Here to help you. Who? Me? Yes, you. Make your game dev dreams become reality by helping you make more unique customizations for your guns. Conceptually in this video, what we're gonna do is implement an array of eye collision handlers in the gun scriptable object and have each of those handle the impact. We'll also dynamically change the impact type of our gun to be frost or explosive rounds using the modifier system. Then the impact system will handle playing an explosion or a frost explosion, whatever type of particle system and a different sound for these impacts. If we break down an effect like explosive rounds, there's really four things that we can see. Number one is we want to damage nearby enemies whenever the explosion happens. We want to provide audio feedback and visual feedback to the player that this is an explosive round. And number four that might be a little bit less obvious is we need a way to configure the gun to make different things happen whenever that impact happens. Right now, all guns are using a bullet impact type, which is great because we just want to play like particle systems that are like the dust coming out of the wall. And now we want, whenever we make impact, to do explosions and maybe play a different sound. Luckily, we've already implemented all of these systems in previous videos. In part three, we handled taking damage with the eye damageable interface. In part eight, we implemented the modifier system, which allows us to customize arbitrary attributes on a gun, such as changing the impact type. And of course, the impact system, which is not part of this series, but was covered before, handles things like playing particle systems and sounds on impact. Links to those original videos are gonna be in the description of this video. So it's not too crazy since we have a lot of the framework in place already. Let's go ahead and dive into that implementation. So like I already said, we'll define a public interface eye collision handler, which defines only one function, handle impact, that accepts a collider impacted object, a vector three hit position, a vector three hit normal, and the gun that shot this bullet. That's really all this one needs. We'll make sure that it was in the namespace Lom Academy Guns Impact Effects. With that defined, we'll open up public class explode that will make extend the eye collision handler and also be in the impact effects namespace. We'll make it implement that handle impact function. And to implement this effect, we need some attributes like the explosion radius, the damage fall off, the base damage, how many enemies should be affected, and that's because we're gonna use physics.overlapsphere non-alloc to prevent garbage generation, which means we also need a private collider array of hit objects, and that should be all that we need at the class level. We'll go ahead and generate a constructor for public explode that accepts all those public fields as arguments and assigns them in the constructor. At the end of the constructor, we'll assign hit objects to be a new collider array of max enemies affected size. In handle impact, like I already said, we'll do int hits equals physics dot overlap sphere non alloc. This will find all colliders that are within the radius that we specify of the hit position that we specified and populate the hit objects colliders with whatever it finds. We'll pass in the gun dot shoot config dot hit mask as the layer mask to make sure we're only colliding with things that we should reasonably be able to damage. It returns us an integer of how many things were hit. So we'll iterate for int i equals zero i less than hits incrementing i. We'll check if that hit object has an eye damageable component on it. If it is, that means we can damage it. So we'll get the float distance between the hit position and the hit objects indexed by I at the closest point on that collider to the hit position. This only works on primitive collider types and convex mesh colliders, but it gives us the most accurate representation of how far away this object hit was. If you just use the hit object I transform position, we might actually be out of range of this explosion because it's based on a pivot point or the center of the object. We'll then make that damage will take damage based on the distance and our damage fall off. So we'll do damage will dot take damage mathf dot seal to int base damage times the damage fall off evaluated at that distance over the radius, giving us a percentage from zero to one of how far away it was. If we open up the gun scriptable object, we'll add a public eye collision handler array called bullet impact effects, and we'll make it be a new eye collision handler array of size zero, saying that by default, we don't have any. If we scroll down to where we apply damage and handle the impact, which is under private void handle bullet impact, immediately after we make the damage will take damage, what we're gonna do is apply those impact effects. So we'll iterate over each eye collision handler handler in bullet impact effects. We'll just do handler dot handle impact, passing in the hit collider, the hit location, the hit normal, 
and this for the gun's critical object. Because both projectile and hit scan guns both come to this function, this is the only change we need to make in the gun scriptful object to apply these effects. That's pretty cool. Next up, to make our bullets actually do something different in terms of audio and visual effects, we need a different impact type to be applied on our gun scriptful object. Since we already have a modifier system to handle changing these things dynamically at runtime, let's create a new public class impact type modifier that extends our abstract value modifier and will impact the impact type type. In the public override void apply gun scriptful object gun, we'll just set the gun impact type to be the amount, which is weirdly named for this particular case, but the amount is always the value we want either to be offset or whatever. This one's just a straight override. If you're not sure what I'm talking about here, go back and watch part eight, which was done a couple weeks ago, where we first implemented this modifier system. I think it'll make a lot more sense to you then. In the gun modifier applier, which we also created in part eight, we'll add a serialized private impact type impact type override so we can create on start an impact type modifier setting the amount to be the impact type override and then we'll apply that to the gun selector active gun in here since we're modifying the active gun already we'll do gun selector dot active gun bullet impact effects equals a new eye collision handler array And in there, we'll also give it a value. The first element will be a new explode. We'll set it to be 1.5 radius and an animation curve that goes from max damage to 25% damage over the time value of one. We'll say that the base damage is 10, meaning if it's directly on top of the object we hit, we'll do 10 damage. And if it's up to 1.5 units away, it'll be two and a half damage, which would round up to three. And we'll say we can only hit 10 things to keep it fast. That should be all we need to do to get our explosive rounds working properly, from a code perspective at least. Let's hop back to the Unity editor, and we'll start working on setting up our impact system to start working with explosive rounds. We'll create a new impact type called Explosive Bullet, and we'll assign that to the gun modifier impact type override. If that's all that we do and click play, you'll see that we'll start dealing damage to nearby enemies whenever we are shooting this bullet. We don't actually have to make impact and it'll do some damage that falls off over the distance. When I actually do a shot, it doesn't look or sound right. If we take a look at the surface manager, we can see that each texture has a surface map to it. And that surface has a list of impact type effects where the impact type maps to a surface effect. So for our new impact type, we can add a new entry here, but we also need a new surface effect. We'll create a new surface effect, explosive bullet effect. We'll need to assign to that a spawn object effect and a play audio effect that correspond to explosive rounds. To do that, we need a particle system to play. So from our Unity particle pack, we'll take the tiny explosion particle system. We'll just turn off looping of everything and make the stop action be disable. I'll save that particle system. And we'll create a new spawn object effect and we'll assign that tiny explosion to be the prefab that we're going to use there. We'll also create a play audio effect called play bullet explosion sound. Use the same audio source prefab we've been using this whole time, the impact audio source, and we'll assign the explosion audio clip to be the one that plays. If all this is totally foreign to you, please check out the impact system video where I cover all this. We implement it, we go over the use cases, all that kind of stuff in that video. There's of course a link in the description and a card on the screen. We'll use that spawn explosion bullet effect and the play bullet explosion sound on that surface effect. And then for each of the surfaces, we'll add a new impact type effect where the impact type is the explosion bullet and the surface effect is the explosive bullet effect. Once we've hooked up all of those, we can see whenever I shoot something, the explosion happens and we can see that the enemies are taking damage even when I don't hit them. And if I do hit them, then they take even more damage. Great. Let's now implement a second impact effect, the frost ammo. This one, if we think about what would a frost bullet do, probably it has like a smaller radius of impact, probably does less damage, but it probably also damages multiple people and distinctly differently from the explosion one, it would also apply a slow effect probably to the enemy. So it sounds like there's a lot of overlap with explosive bullets and a little bit something different because anytime we have a lot of overlap, we want to not have to write as much code. So instead of copy pasting code, we'll create a new abstract area of effect class and we'll cut everything out of explode and take it into the abstract area of effect. 
Anything that's private will change to protected. And probably I'm going to need to know how many things got hit on handle impact. So I'll make a protected int hits and set that to be the return value of physics or left severe non alloc and we'll use that instead of the local variable that we had there. We'll also make the handle impact be virtual so any subclasses can optionally override it or extend it. Now on explode, the constructor will just call the base constructor that we just copied up. We'll make it extend that abstract area of effect class and we'll remove basically everything else because all of it's now in abstract area of effect. Now we'll define our new class, public class frost. We'll make it extend the abstract area of effect. We'll generate the same base constructor. And add in a public animation curve slow decay, which is going to define how the slow effect works on an enemy. So I'll also define a second constructor that accepts the slow decay as well. We'll again call the same base and then set the slow decay to be whatever was passed in. In that first constructor, we should also assign that slow curve to a new animation curve so we don't get any null reference exceptions. Cool. We'll then do the public override void, handle impact. We'll do whatever is going to happen on the abstract area of effect by default, and then we're going to apply the slowing effect. So we'll iterate over each of those hits that we just made, and for each object that we hit, we'll try to get the I slowable interface. If it returns true, we'll get the slowable to be populated and we'll call slowable dot slow. This probably looks very extremely similar to what we did when we did damaging in part three. So we'll go define that public interface I slowable, which will define a void slow that accepts that animation curve slow curve. Instead of taking out health though, we're going to adjust the movement speed of something. So we're going to go to the enemy movement class, implement the I slowable, and to slow something, we're going to need a private coroutine, slow coroutine, and a private float base speed. So we can return back to that base speed at the end. On start, we'll assign that base speed to be whatever the agent's speed is. We're doing it on start instead of awake, so that way if we, I don't know, need to configure something, we at least wait until start is called before we gather that base speed since awake is called as soon as that component gets added or instantiated. In slow, we'll check if the slow coroutine is not null. If it's not null, we'll stop it. And then we'll assign slow coroutine to be start coroutine, slow down, passing in the slow curve. We'll define that slow down, private I enumerator slow down. And in there, all we're gonna do is a simple while loop with float time equals zero, while time is less than slow curve dot keys caret one. And what that does is just grabs the last key minus one. It's the same as doing slow curve dot keys dot length minus one. It's just a lot shorter to write. And we're gonna get the time property of that. As long as our time parameter is less than whatever the animation curve time is. So like if slow curve goes from 0 to 2, we'll go over 2 seconds. If it's 0 to 1, we'll go over 1 second. In here, we'll set the agent speed to be the base speed times the slow curve evaluated at the current time. And then we'll do the normal stuff, time plus equals time dot delta time, yield return null. At the end of the coroutine, we'll assign the agent speed back to the base speed as well. This one shouldn't be too surprising, I don't think. The last code change we're going to make here is to change our gun modifier applier because we don't have a way to really configure them at runtime to use a new frost. And for the last animation curve, we'll say from time zero, we'll immediately slow them down to 25% of their move speed. They'll stay that slow until 1.75 seconds, and then we'll have them quickly regenerate their speed back up to one, which would be their default base speed. If we hop back to the Unity editor. I'm going to quickly repeat the exact same process we just did for explosive bullet of making an impact type, a surface effect, play audio effect, and spawn object effect. I don't want to waste a whole bunch of time just going through that exact same process again. So fast forward, I'm pulling the particle system from the Unity particle pack, magic effects, isolance, just taking the tiny shards and the, some mist and using that for the impact effect. And I'm using a mud because I didn't have an ice shattering sound. Remember the full project's on GitHub, so if you need to check out anything, see how the configuration set up, you can always download the full project and see it there. Then on the gun modifier, we're going to change the impact type override to be the frost bullet, and we can see whenever I shoot any enemy, we get the new impact effects, a new sound, and these enemies become very slow on impact and quickly regenerate their speed at about 1.75 seconds. Pretty awesome. With this concept, you should be able to implement all kinds of different impact effects. You can have the bullet splinter off onto the sides after it's made impact, or even create like a magic pool beneath the enemy after it dies. This gives us the flexibility to handle all of these types of effects and more very simply. One common effect that might be a little bit more challenging to do would be something like piercing rounds. It's a little bit challenging because we need to make sure we keep track for each bullet how many enemies have been pierced because maybe you want it to be able to pierce 
two enemies or through a wall and one enemy or have different logic based on that. I challenge you to think about that a little bit and see how would you come up with a solution. And in the future, whenever I cover that, we'll see how did you do versus what did I do? Maybe your implementation will be even better. Coming soon, we're gonna cover things like having attachments that group multiple modifiers together and allow our player to dynamically at runtime attach different attachments to the gun that will apply different modifiers to that gun. This is a common system we see in things like Battlefield or Call of Duty. If you wanna see more topics like that, Make sure that you've liked and subscribed to help the channel grow, reach more people, and add value to more people. And if you want to support this channel, you can go to patreon.com slash bombacademy, or just click super thanks or join right here on YouTube. Get your name up here on the screen, and a shout out at the awesome tier and some other cool perks too. With the awesome tier, there's Autumn K, Matt Parkin, Ivan, Rulin, Ify Obelis, and Fernando. And at the tremendous tier, there's Bruno Bozic. And at the phenomenal tier, there's Andrew Bowen. Thank you all for your support. I'm so incredibly grateful.